Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am for your participation in these small groups. Scripture says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. If you don't understand something, or you're struggling with something, just be honest and talk about it. Just be real. Guys, I know the interaction and the fellowship you're going to have in these groups, they're going to be an incredible blessing in your life. When I was young, I used to run track, and I was pretty good at it. Of course, at the time, my dream was to be in the Olympics. So now when the Olympics roll around, certainly my favorite thing to watch is track and field. Well, as you know, only a few elite athletes get selected to go. Imagine the thrill if an Olympic committee came knocking at your door and selected you to represent your country. Now, what if you were selected to represent an even greater team with an even greater purpose? Well, just like the Olympics, you as a child of God have been chosen. This time, however, it's not the Olympic Committee selecting you. It is God Almighty knocking at the door of your heart, selecting you for His team. He has chosen you to run the race of a lifetime. And if you have trusted in Jesus Christ, God has done just that. This race is unique only to you and has been marked out especially for you. Like the lines on a racetrack, God has marked out the race of your life that will certainly take you on a grand adventure. In Ephesians 2, 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As this verse tells us, we are something crafted with skill for a specific reason by God to fulfill His purposes. While the destination of heaven is the same for all Christ's disciples, you can't compare your track or your race to someone else's because the journey is different for everyone. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul tells us in chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us to be adopted as His sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will. What's amazing and beyond comprehension is that Scripture tells us that God knew us and chose us for this race even before He created the earth. The thing about this race is that there are no timeouts, no breaks, no intermissions, and no half times. We are instructed to just run and keep on running. So here's my question to you. Are you even in the race? Or are you in a season of your walk where you're just a passive Christian? Someone who is no longer running the race that God has set before you. You may be looking at this race like a marathon, but in reality, it's more like a steeplechase. A race full of obstacles, barriers, hurdles, and hazards. They can't be avoided or erased and they come in all different sizes and at all different times. The writer of Hebrews, which most likely was Paul, not only understood this, but also referred to this choosing and predestination as running a race. Hebrews 12, one through two says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here's the interesting thing about this race. It's both a contest and a conflict. This race is a contest towards daily progress towards Christ-likeness. In many respects, we race not against opponents, but against ourselves. The conflict is that there's an internal struggle of the soul because our natural tendencies are towards sinfulness, selfishness, and laziness. So a question to ask yourself is this, are you engaging in the necessary disciplines and activities that are enabling you to grow and mature in your Christ-likeness? 
Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26, do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. Just as in any race, you don't just run to finish, you run in such a way as to win. You can't win a race without strict training and certain disciplines, which will require great endurance, perseverance, patience, and resolve. All of this is a lifetime of training in order to arrive at the finish line victorious. It's more than just being a disciple. It's about being a disciple maker, which means that you must arrange your life around certain practices that will enable you to do what you cannot do by willpower alone. So where do you arrive at the end of this race? The prize is becoming a spiritual champion. A spiritual champion is one sold out for Jesus, straining to become more like him every day and sharing the good news of the gospel with all of the people around you. The finish line of faith is a life that is more Christ-like today than yesterday. The goal is not perfection, it's progress. So are you continually growing more like Jesus today than you were yesterday? Are you creating disciples and fulfilling the Great Commission? Paul, at the end of his life, made an incredible statement when pouring into the next generation. He wrote this in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So can you say with confidence that you are fighting the good fight and running the race in such a way as to win the prize? So when you stand before Jesus, will he say, well done, good and faithful servant. Love you guys. Take care and God bless.